Well, hello again. Hello to every one of you watching us on YouTube on NTN Channel 18, Cable 6 and 9. I'm Frederick Ramprasad and I'm really, really happy today uh, to have a charming personality in studio. Uh, she, on the basic things I know, she always likes to smile. I just met her for the first time. Melissa Ramdin, she is the Vice President of the Tales of Hope um, Animal Activist Group and it's a pleasure having her in studio. I want to welcome you watching 8 to 9, NTN channel 18 cable 6 to 9 and on YouTube in Ghana and across the world. There's always uh, this feeling of um, empathy and caring for animals because humans and animals uh, tend to work hand in hand with each other, complement each other. Um, a dog could be a man's best friend, uh, the girls might say a, a cat, but it's all of a different perspective. And it's always good to know when we have uh, persons who dedicate their lives in helping the cause of protecting animals, caring for animals. And today it's a pleasure to have Melissa Ramdi, the, she's the Vice President. And we are going to be touching some issues that you, uh, the viewing populace, would like to know more about. Uh, Melissa, it's a pleasure having you here. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. All right, great. Melissa, let's uh, start the ball rolling. And um, in, in bingo, they say it's a blue ball or, or a white ball. But today we're talking about animals. Um, why Tales of Hope? What, what's the initiative um, be, behind the name and the company as such? Okay, so thank you again for having me. It's always a pleasure given the opportunity to talk about animal welfare in Guyana. Um, my organization was formed five years ago mm -hmm. and it was a group of women who would have been volunteering for a number of years with uh, the organizations like the Guyana Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, GSPCA, and we would have also partnered with a few other organizations where we worked as volunteers. However, the team that comprised of Tales of Hope executive body and the team that came together behind developing this organization. Our main focus was to look more at animal welfare in terms of how people treat their animals. We wanted to do a, go a step further to examine the laws of Guyana to see if there are anything that we could have done, make representation at different levels. And we felt that if, an, if another organization was formed, it would not only join the pool that was already in existence to raise our voices louder, but also we felt that collectively we would have been able to make a bigger difference. And I can tell you safely that this would have happened since the organization was formed, we all came together, we've been working together. I know the government of Guyana has already um, started relooking at the animal welfare bill. So there have been a lot of changes that took place. The name Tales of Hope, initially we had, we called ourselves Arabs. And, but eventually we decided that we wanted to make it more simpler for someone to remember the name of the organization. And this is why we thought that Tales of Hope, Tales meaning <laughs> associating it with an animal, mm -hmm. yeah. and hope, that hope for a better future for them. Absolutely. So that was the intention behind the name. Um, however, I cannot go forward without uh, recognizing the president of Tales of Hope, and that is Ms. Shari Rodriguez de Silva. She was actually the one who inspired all of us mm -hmm. to come together. And she's somebody who has been very vocal long before I came into the picture about animal welfare in Guyana. So she is actually the person who has propelled this to the way to the to where we are today. Mm -hmm. She's one of the fueling forces behind all of the organizations because even when we decide as a team that we're not going to be able to do something, Shari just doesn't let go. And when she does this, she pull everybody else along with her. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have to recognize the driving force behind all of our causes and she is one of those persons. Excellent. You have pontified and articulated along uh, in a holistic overview of your organization and where you're going. What has happened, you've uh, given a chronological perspective, uh, the essence of time, your development and where we are today and uh, what you're hoping for in the future might be a very important question to move to this time. Um, where do you see Tales of Hope in the future? 
Well, Tales of Hope is actually moving very rapidly. We are working towards getting a sanctuary for animals set up. We would have engaged the minister, the minister within the Ministry of Housing, um, Ms. Suzanne Rodriguez, who would have committed and would have been helping us to acquire a plot of land. Because our challenge right now with our organization is that we would have taken in so many animals. We had to rescue abused animals. We would have picked up animals off of the street and persons would have give, handed over their animals to us. Then we, you know, it, these things tend to happen. So what, what has resulted in this is that we had to find space for them. And animals cannot be kept in too much of a confined location. They will get into fights. They will become depressed and all of these things. So right now we have maxed out our capacity at our shelter. So with this initiative working along with the minister, we're looking towards opening a huge sanctuary, not just for small animals like dogs and cats. We're looking to rescue some more horses, which we have done in the past. I'll tell you about that in a bit. Some donkeys and other animals. We never turn any animal away and that includes a snake. Great. Right? We rescue as many animals as we can because we do believe in coexistence and this is something that we have been trying to put out there. Um, in addition to us opening our sanctuary, we are hoping that the laws of Guyana will um, put harsher penalties in place for persons who would have been found guilty of abusing any animal or neglecting their animals or failing to just take into consideration that even though these animals don't have the ability to speak our language, they still feel pain and go through all of the emotions that we do. Recently, I came across something that we will be addressing in the future, and that is that there have been some persons who are not following the protocols that are in place by the laws of Guyana as it result, uh, when it comes to, for example, castrating an animal. People don't take the time, and I say people loosely, I'm, I'm talking about you know vet techs, veterinarians, some of them, they don't take the time to um, give the animal a local anesthesia, for example. Mm. So they sometimes conduct this process by not taking into consideration that animal would feel pain. Now imagine if that is being done to a horse without any form of numbness. That's true, yeah. Right? And this is a practice that happens. They, I'm not saying that the government is not doing enough. The government is doing the best that they can. But with animal activists like myself, Ms. Rodriguez, Ms. Saida Manbod, Ms. Dominic Amar, and um, Ms. Donna Lam, and all the other persons out there, Marcia Tucker and all of them, with persons like us having our eyes and ears on the ground who are the persons, the viewers right now, we tend to be able to pay attention to these things a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And when we, we, tr we would normally intervene in a very, um, what is it, correct manner, for the lack of a better word, you know, following the right procedure, informing the right authority to ensure that certain systems are put in place to prevent these things. But Guyana has a far way to go. I can tell you from the time I would have gotten into animal activism to now, which was in the year 2017 to now, I have been actively involved in doing something relating to animal welfare. There has been a huge difference in the way people treat their animals, in the way people um, attend to, to slaughtering their animals. They, they pay a little bit more attention. Persons are more caring, more vigilant. We would have been receiving number of reports because people pay attention. They are more educated now. They they That's would have right. they they would have been sensitized at a different level. So they understand. You know, sometimes we take things for granted. We forget that the dog that is sitting out there probably needs some water when we ourselves can't stand the heat. So based on all the work that the different organizations would have done along with Tales of Hope, people are more sensitized. You would find that persons would leave a bucket of water outside now. They would take that into consideration. Even though they cannot afford food, they would still remember to put some water outside. Um, we would get countless mm. phone calls about an animal that is strayed, an animal that is visibly sick, an animal that would have been injured. Persons are coming out. People are taking them into their yards until we can get to them to see if we can administer any medical care and all of these things. So I feel like even though 
Tales of Hope has a vision in place. The people of Guyana, most of the people of Guyana, I have to say, are actually helping us to get to that point sooner rather than later. So that's where we are. Great. So you are watching an interview with Melissa Ramdin. She's the vice president of Tales of Hope, an animal activist group that really cares for animals. She's been articulating, quantifying, and educating, edifying you, uh, the viewing populace on their modus operandi and what they're doing in Guyana, the pivotal role they're playing with animals. Um, on that backdrop, I would like to bring into the perspective, through, through the years I've uh, conducted a program on the radio, 89.1 FM called Reality Check some time ago, uh, say Manboard was one of the guests. Uh, we, we look at um, special incidences that affects animals, for example, at certain occasions, they will have loud squibs and those noise, even music sets and so forth. Uh, how do you see those um, inferences when it comes to the welfare of animals? So this is something we've been fighting for for a number of years. We actually started a campaign called Ban the Ban, mm -hmm. which had to do with fireworks and squibs. We would have. Um, we would have engaged the Minister of Home Affairs before, we would have reached out to the hierarchy of the government, but it is something that we recognize needs to be, will take time to get done. Because there are certain places, certain countries in the world that use silent fireworks, for example, so you still get that beautiful pop of colors and shapes and all of that without the loud noise. Now, since you would have touched on that, Mr. Rampasad, I'd like to highlight a few things because I think people underestimate how detrimental loud noises can be on animals. Mm -hmm. Because we would have had so many cases where horses, when they hear that loud bang, they, they go crazy because of the, they, they hear sounds 10,000 times louder than mm. we do. Even we can dogs, only imagine even dogs that. go crazy. Yes. Yeah. So the horses would run and, and obviously the first thing that happened is that they run straight head on into traffic. We would have had cases where you know you have the pointed arrow point fence where animal dogs try to get away because they're so scared and they get stuck there. They die. Mm -hmm. Some of them die of heart attacks. Um, last year we would have had a case where a close friend of Tales of Hope, she would have left her pit bull during the day home to just go out to get something and we would encourage persons to tie your animal and all of these things just so that they don't get away. His attempt because of the loud noise was to jump through the window with the leash still connected to the collar and he hung himself. Oh. Right? If you go to the seawall the day after we would have had our fireworks display you would find birds dead. When birds hear loud noises they leave their nests and they don't ever go back. So their, 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 um, their chicks would be left unattended, their eggs would be left unattended. So we literally disrupt the ecosystem when we do this, right? It affects all animals, We can't, and we cannot forget that it affects our senior citizens mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely, right? that's not a point too. So, I mean, this is why everybody loves to celebrate um, our, our special holidays with, with a bang, but that bang, causes a lot of pain Resulting and effects. suffering yeah. uh, on, on, our, on our animals, you know, and, and oftentimes after New Year you drive on the road, you see so many of them dead on the mm -hmm. road, you see so many of them injured on the road, so many animals suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder because of this. You have senior dogs, persons who would have had their dogs for, for 15, 16 years die in their arms, and these are, these are, these are some of the stories that Tales of Hope would have taken the opportunity and use our Facebook page to put it out there. Um, I know that there have been some changes because the Ministry of Home Affairs in the past uh, couple of years, they would have clamped down a little bit on the persons who were not permitted to sell fireworks and, and firecrackers. Last year, we experienced a little bit of, um, they weren't strict enough. We felt that, and, and maybe because we didn't push hard enough. So it, it just goes to show how much of a, um, how important our role is. The minute we as, a, as, as animal activists decide to take a step back, thinking that we would have already addressed this in the past, you know, it, everything slows down. So it's as if we have to continuously push, we have to keep 
pushing everybody we have to keep reminding people because we all have important things to address i mean the the different ministries they have so many projects that they need to deal with and all of these things so we would have recognized how important our role is the fact that we did not push a little bit harder last year resulted in persons being able to acquire firework anywhere or or firecracker anyway right so and there are some cases where persons took the time to be wicked <laughs> they sometimes would throw the squib on the dog throw the squib on the donkey i and this is why it is very important that we educate our children absolutely going and yes going forward we are uh, just having a discussion here with melissa ramdeen she's the vice president of tales of hope animal activist group if you're just joining us on television here channel 18 cable 69 or on youtube very important uh, our time seems to be quickly evolving. I would like uh, Melissa to touch on uh, the contact quickly. Uh, so the opposite is Melissa. Um, persons might want to donate, they might want to contribute, they might want to find out more about your approach quickly in a nutshell to animals. But most importantly, they want to know how they can get in contact. I see the numbers already donate today. Yes. But you re-emphasize the importance of persons' uh, financial contribution and how they can go about um, doing that. Apart from the number, uh, is there any other revelation you would like to bring to the forum as to um, the, the amount of donations? Do you have a bank account they can donate into or, or how could they um, probably make more? Uh, Leah's more with you. All right, so uh, the number that is displayed there in the background, 627-1314, is actually um, our MMG number. So we would like to I would encourage persons to utilize the MMG medium because it gets the money is readily available to us. Um, persons can donate food supplies, they can donate detergents and all of these things. But more importantly, you can also utilize this number to report any form of cruelty. So you have the 627-1314, 616-1810 and 657-2014. Those three numbers you can reach us on at any time. Um, we don't sleep, and so if you call us in the night you need help, we try our best to render some form of assistance to you. But Tales of Hope work, the work that we do, we cannot do it without some contributions. So if, you, if you're interested in becoming a member of Tales of Hope, you can contact us on any one of these numbers, and you can also reach out to us on Facebook, um, you can inbox us for some further information because as a member it means that you will make a monthly contribution to the organization. Um, our work speaks for itself. We have a far way more to, more to go, but with your help we can take it for, at one step further. Great. Our time uh, is almost up. Within two minutes I'm going to ask Melissa uh, quickly to uh, offer her closing remarks and at the same time re-emphasize the numbers and uh, the, the contact information. All right. Um, I'd just like to yeah. thank you for having me here and I'd like to encourage persons to be vigilant and look out for any form of animal abuse or animal cruelty and to reach out to us if you have any information um, regarding those scenarios. Also you can reach out to us to donate. If you pay attention to our page, we usually have our low cost pay and duty campaigns and vaccination drives. We would have had one last week and in three weeks from now we will be having a second one. Utilize this opportunity to get your animals vaccinated, deworm and treated for ticks and fleas if necessary. Thank you so much Melissa. Ramdin, Vice President of Tales of Hope uh, Animal Active with Group. Uh, you were actually looking at an interview here and uh, she's definitely touched on some salient points. Uh, the most important thing, we need to coexist with animals and also um, their starting uh, contribution, as she says, and I quote, we don't sleep. <laughs> this alone tells you about the kind of backdrop, what happens behind the scene. I know what it is um, to deal with animal issues. I said I host the talk shows along this line. So I'm very familiar with what's happening and their constraints and so forth. Uh, there's much more we could have discussed where time has evolved. For example, we could have looked at the vaccination process and those things. Um, but uh, maybe in the next uh, next interview very soon, I, I hope she's going to be back. There's an open invitation. Thanks. This is where we pull the curtains down. Thanks to Randy Kanai, our console operator and editor, Patrick saying, 
Take care, just be good and uh, remember to share the word. Let's look out for the animals and contact Tales of Hope 627-1314. That is 627-1314-657-2014-657-2014-616-1810. Those are the numbers. Our editor will have it uh, displayed on screen. So you could follow, call him up, and uh, not only to tell them that you need them to look after an animal, but also to contribute and to make their work a success. Thank you so much, and uh, thanks, Melissa. And we wish all of you a good day today. Thank you. <laughs>